Like, no so grudging. are you judging people for wanting to get fucked and wanting to be wanted, or you're judging them for not for being too broke to go to the other dentist? Yeah. Fly, fly, oh, to be a fly. Fly, fly, come and be a fly on the wall. Yeah. Hello there. Our house is a mess. Come on in. Welcome to Fly on the Wild and Podcast. This is a show about dating, about parenting, um, about hating your man, and recording it all for the world to see. I'm your neighborhood-friendly black girl, Amber. And I'm Ben. And this show is also for people who also hate their women as well, and their men. Who would like, hate their women? I don't know. It's like sometimes there are some women like that are hateable. Like not anybody, Not me. Not anybody I know. My phone, my phone just buzzed. Look at your cute little face on here. She's so cute. And look at this. I got this crazy picture of her. Ben has the worst at, um, picture he could possibly find as a background of it's me. It's my so it's actually if you ever see uh John Wick four, it's where the one of the main meeting houses in, in Paris at the Palace Opera. And I think Amber's so cute in it. So but she looks crazy as hell like a murderer. That's I look like a murderer. So, so why why would you ask a mer- a murderer for their hand in marriage? Mm, so you can murder the people I want you to. Got you. Mm-hmm. How's that working out for you? I you almost got murdered this morning. Remember that? I did almost get murdered this morning because I woke up a little bit later. Uh, lunch was supposed to be at eight. I woke up at eight thirty. Breakfast. Breakfast. It's not that I have you on this like very rigid schedule. It's that last night we said we have been missing breakfast quality time together. So yes. let's 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 both be on our shit in the morning. Yeah. Let's both wake up, start our day together, start breakfast together. And on the first day of trying to be better people, you messed up. Yeah, but also that night I went grocery store shopping. I also filled up the tank uh of car the, we're not talking the about car. That. and then you took a nap and i woke you up so that we could get prepared for this podcast so i was doing a bunch of stuff the night before i did sleep in i do yeah i had to did you wake up on time when it I, mattered i did you want to tell people off camera how uh i didn't let you sleep in no no you overreacted because i apologize and then you were like oh you're a terrible person like you always you. do this i didn't say that amber does the saying i it's said my you're a for- horrible person yeah Horrible. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Horrible. While we're talking about, you know, horrible marriages like ours, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about Risa Tisa. Who the fuck did I marry? What 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 we're probably going to be talking about every week of the 2024 year. I don't have a problem with that. Ben, you still need to binge the whole thing, don't you? Nope. I there are so many TV shows I've not yet watched, uh, and r- real TV shows, traditional media. It's about to be a real TV show. I know, show. I know, but I think uh, this is going to sound so fucked up. Like, I, I understand that this woman went through hell, but there are creatives and writers out there who are going through hell who didn't get lucky like this Risa Tisa did. You think she got lucky? 100%. Meaning, think- meaning a pathological liar and having to endure, you know, and then a web of lies is luck? To capitalize on it. No, but then. so many people have had to deal with that anyway. And, and they, they don't just get aren't lucky. good storytellers. And they don't get lucky. Well, they haven't put the story together. Right. To share with others. They're I'm sure ma- they have. Ma- so, she's, so she's lucky for being vulnerable? No, no. I'm saying... A so black woman is lucky for being vulnerable. I you see, heard it here first, I folks. see what she's trying to... Amber's trying to cancel me. This is her favorite thing to do. Every single week, she's like, see, look at this white man. I'm just saying... it. it le- so so George R. R. Martin can write a good story and and we not call him luck. But this woman put together a hundred percent he got parts. lucky. George R. R. Martin got super lucky. There's something that I tell Amber all the time. There's three things that make someone well known, right? Three paths to fame. The first one is raw talent. Okay. Fame, which Risa Tisa has as a storyteller. Okay, at least you acknowledge that. Uh second one is discipline. Risa Tisa also had that because Great. she posted 50 parts consistently right so that's discipline so who's that you on? and then the third part is luck and the thing is you can only control one of those and that is discipline you cannot control anything else in your life right you some people your are, talent. that comes down to discipline some people are just okay. born or they were they were raised a certain kind of way that storytelling was part of their tradition and so i think Teresa tisa and everything got very lucky right she she broke every single rule of tiktok which was bad lighting, you know, bad editing, 
And people were enamored by her story. So I think in many ways she did get lucky. I will, I will give but, you the, but but it wasn't solely luck. I it was solely agree luck. No, that. it was discipline. Okay, she, also had, had to, the, she well, also had the discipline. So my thing is, I'm saying that there are a lot less lucky people, but I know who they are and I'd rather sit down and read their stories, right? So if you look behind over here, one of, one of uh, this amazing author, Cindy Rockland, wrote this beautiful book called Flowers for the Sea, and it's very like gothic and disturbing. And they're um, like a queer uh, black femme uh, person who Amber and I got to hang out with, drink with, and they wrote this award-winning book. And Zinni Rockland did not get as lucky as Risa, but I had Well, the... maybe Zinni needs to put together 50 TikToks in <laughs> no, equal, no. equal parts. No, no, no. They're, they're and, working... And hit the gram and They're go working live. on their, uh, I think their masters and working on their other books. But uh, what I'm saying is that I like to find content that hasn't gone as lucky. So I'd rather watch those things. Well, the rest of the world disagrees with you because... Sure. Who the fuck did I marry is going to be on Tubi, oh right? The first segment of our show is called Hashtag Influence. This is a segment where we talk about what's hot on the internet right now. And we all still know, coming in at number one on the charts, it's Risa Tisa. She's having a, an, an incredible oh, 2024. You. And you look just like your pictures. I am so relieved. Oh, wow. You're stunning. We can go ahead and delete these date naps. It's a pregnancy test. I don't know what it is, but this I don't know. Great, it's, this is great quality. There's always something wrong. Why is it, is it always something yes. wrong? I'm down here at the office with my wife. I'm really, the audio the is building. terrible. I don't have my key with me. I don't. I the, literally, the, the audio, the audio engineering was this high. As, this is a middle school David, doing audio engineering. I'm talking. No, this is somebody who jumped has to. Been on the phone. This was Record, this. Recreated. That woman has. This, the actress hasn't changed her outfit more than once. I don't know if you're gonna stay. Do you hear that me, wind in the background? I can honestly so, tell you. What's wrong with a woman having the same wig on He's the entire thing? No, I'm saying they're literally the same clothes on. This was shot in a week. This was shot in a week. Some people have to get hey, back to work. Come what's wrong with shooting things in a week? I, I've been finding out so much about this man that is not true. Like, who the fuck did <laughs> oh, I love it. Mary? Which one is it, Ben? Do you like people that wake up and get to work or not? That that's that's basically the theme of today's show. I, because what I'm seeing is people that said, "Let's be the first to do it." Yeah, no, yeah. Let's I, get up and get to it before somebody else does. And look, we sat here and watched it. I know. Just because you're the first to do something doesn't just means you're greedy. You're not thoughtful. No, it does it? Yeah, it does. This this there was zero creativity in any of this. So it, so if you so you heard it here first. If you're a pioneer at something, that means you're greedy. Uh, yes. You know who what the pioneers did? The, re, they moved re, out west. If you're a and trailblazer. They, and they committed uh, genocide. So what's both it like? cultural genocide and actual. So pioneers not a good thing. Okay, so you want to be the last to do something? Is what you're saying? Um. Yeah. Because I we I mean just not this the last, point. but I so want. You, so you I stand want to, by staying in bed. And, the, and the, thing is, the thing is, these people just took this woman's story and they're like, okay, we're going to build off of it instead of creating some what other is, interesting new story. That's what everybody on the internet does. Yes, but instead of making it their own or making it new, they're just taking the story and showing like a really shitty quality film. So I liked what you told me to do because I, as someone, I could do, you gave me this the suggestion where I should make a series called Who the Fuck Did I Praise? And it's my journey from like, Growing up as a homeschool kid who went to a missionary school who now is right. not part of the evangelical yes. alt-right movement. I mean, I have so more vision the than the people on Tubi. Yes. Right. But, yes, exactly. But I'm not going to like, would I get high and watch that? Yes. Yeah, but but also they're not honoring the original creator. She had no part in, that's true. in that's that fair. at all. And that, to, I think to that's our knowledge. To, like, very disrespectful. But no. they're not the only She's ones rep on the by internet CAA. That doing that. No, CAA did not broker a deal with these 2B creators. <laughs> Absolutely not. I know they didn't, but in Risa just got repped by CAA, like, yesterday. Right. She, she could have gave them, like, a, looks good to me, go for it. I doubt that. I think, I think she, because you know what she did? She did have a lawyer friend who sort of supported her. And I'm, I guarantee So you did you, watch the series? I know enough. Of, I watched enough vicariously through you, or I watched a couple of bits, and I've watched highlights and stuff to know enough that this, that once Risa Tisa started monetizing and getting money, she found the right people to get her on her team. Which so, is great. Yeah. 
But so everybody I, can't do that. So so let me ask you this, because he, here's the thing about it. I respect people who take their camera on their back and go get to get to shooting. It might yeah. not be an Oscar nom, but there is something refreshing it in is, the fact that yeah. like I, I don't have to wait until I work somewhere to start my, my own movie. I can Spoken start my own like movie. like a true Tyler Perry fan. I mean, he used to live in his car, and now he's lives. He's a millionaire. Exactly. Like he, he has his own lot. Just churn, churn, own churn it out, churn it out, churn it out. Yeah, he's doing better than you and me. I, absolutely. Is he not? Yeah, it is true. Yep. So I'm not a huge Tyler Perry fan. I think he needs a writer's room. I think he needs a lot of things. But I can respect somebody yeah, who didn't exactly. just let wait for the gatekeepers to, to open the gates. That's fair. That's fair. But it must be nice for you to just, you know, sit at the house and wait for me to come up with an idea, and then. Oh, I'm, wor then, I'm working on my original novel. And then tell people on Tubi that that, that what they do it ain't original. We, you know what? We should make a Tubi film. I, yeah, let's make a Tubi film. I would love to do that. that. You can't be a part of it, though, because I need my staff there on time. Let's talk about horrible teeth. Oh, God. So, <laughs> Ben, let's talk about our teeth, right? Okay, yeah. True story. When I first moved to L.A., uh, I had a couple cavities left over yeah. because I just had wow. I had about eight cavities in my mouth that I needed to be fixed quickly. You know what I'm saying? And so I asked my friend, I was like, hey, girl, like, do you know a dentist in L.A. that can hook can can get my teeth fixed? I got cavities out the wazoo. And she was like, yeah, girl, my friend can do your veneers for like 10K. He did mine for 25, but he can do yours for 10K. And that was when I learned that nobody has dentists anymore nope. out here. People have uh, doctors who can do veneers. Th those yeah, are real dentists. Yeah, people want to be saying, looked like fucking vampires. Every time yeah. I see someone with veneers, I'm like, you're a fucking vampire. You think they like vampires? Veneer or vampire is the question. Yeah, hell yeah. Like the the smoothness of the yeah. the sharpness of it. I don't mind how white they are, but they take me out of the um. Like I'll, I'll I will openly admit this. You remember when we went to go see the color purple? Yeah. Fantasia's veneers looked so good yeah. that I really couldn't get into. They her were not share copper teeth at they, all. They, they yeah they they weren't struggle teeth like the 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 yeah, story was sad but she teeth. had blinding white veneers yeah. that took me out of the like oh it's not 1910 in Georgia right now. Yeah. So I'm not a big veneers fan. I now if you see me with my teeth whiten, mind your business. But apparently people are getting their veneers done <laughs> just by you know YouTube dentists. TikTok dentist? Because you know there's like this trend that's like TikTok made me buy it. Yeah, yeah. So now it's like TikTok did my teeth. Yeah, there's one incredible video where the it literally looks like... Give he, me that coffee. He just... the it, lo it looks like the man just put some sort of like vampire... You know those Halloween vampire things in your mouth? But he it looks like he just put one of those in his mouth, but it was completely white. There's nothing... There's no distinguishing nature of it. It almost he looks like he's some sort of, you know, Star Trek alien. Yeah. With with different kinds of teeth. You know how in Star Trek they get they look humanoid, but they just have the little pointy ears. Well, these veneer people, they're making them look like aliens. Like would you Star ever Trek. get veneers? Yeah, I would I would get veneers. Yeah, yeah. On TikTok? Yeah, uh, not on TikTok. I would do my research because I'm not a dumb fucking idiot and I'm not yeah, influenced. Don't have the money. And some people are idiots and get influenced by TikTok to buy like baby dove soap, which is by the way, you should buy baby dove soap um, because we did advertising for them at one point. So, or, or target too, you know, so buy the things so we you advertise. do want veneers, but you're too good for the TikTok business. Yeah, no, I'm going to do my research and save up money. People want veneers so that they can get fucked. Right? Like, isn't that the point of veneers? Like, you just want to be more fuckable. It all comes down to fuckability. So, if you're getting fucked, why do you want new veneers? Exactly. I don't really have the desire. But once I get old and I wrinkly, just asked I you, might. Do you want veneers? Eventually, you when I get old and wrinkly and I'm less fuckable because I'm old and wrinkly, the veneers might, you know, veer me in to get more fucked. Got it. So, or people make me are more fuckability. For wanting to get fucked to the yeah, point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where they're just. Per, per dumb. your logic. <laughs> Yeah, they're dumb for not doing their research properly. and like To get fucked. Yeah, they're just looking at something on TikTok and be like, oh, this looks cool. Instead of using Google or looking up, you know, many different kinds of doctor's websites or medical websites or going and doing a consultation first and asking, you know, like reading reviews. There's lots of people, they don't, people don't want to research anymore. People don't want to make careful decisions. I love that you're talking about this, like you have... You know, like you get up every morning and brush your teeth every morning. 
No, I actually did buy a water pick recently. You so, did buy yeah. a water pick recently. You, uh, you've been investing in your dental health. I don't mean to be judgmental. So one of our reviews was like, Ben just sounds, he, you know, he knows what he's talking about, but he just sounds judgmental. And I, I, I would agree with the listener. Sometimes. And um, one, I don't think I always know what I'm talking about, but I am judgmental because that's what it makes us to be human. We should be judging, but I don't hold grudges. Right, like no. So, are you judging people for wanting to get fucked and wanting to be wanted, or you're judging them for not for being too broke to go to the the other dentist? Yeah, I guess I'm judging. I'm judging their inability to be like careful with their money and being and considering. Okay, like I want to get fucked. I want to change my teeth, but maybe I work on other things to make me more fuckable. Right, things that don't cost as much. But bad teeth, will, bad teeth will stop you not only from getting laid. Well, actually, I don't really think bad teeth will stop you from getting laid. Bad mm. teeth will stop you from getting a decent job, pursuing mm. your dreams. Just don't open your mouth as much. Just like when you when you go to the job. I've interview. seen lots of very attractive people who know that their teeth are fucked up, and they get away. They're like smile like this. You smile like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because my teeth are a little fucked up. Yeah, they're, they're not fucked. They're up. a little yellowed. I like your teeth. Oh, thanks. They are. Uh, okay. Apparently, Beyonce, our queen, y'all. We, I, I'm, I'm in the beehive. I want to be clear about that. We, we saw Beyonce mm-hmm. before there was even a mute challenge. We saw her abroad. We saw Renaissance abroad. Our queen Beyonce has a new hair care line out called Sacred. But we love her, the Queen Bee. She is being accused of stealing the design of another hairline company called Twig. I'm looking at the images right now in front of me. I could just see it's, Beyonce looking right now, like cool designs for different shampoo, like Googling late at night. And like, I want to steal that one. Like, no, she's not. Beyonce's writing fucking music. Well, it's not her. her. Team, it's her team. It's her, her team. Her team came up with a concept. And listen, if you look at the picture, the Twig has like three, you know, tubes or whatever and uh the sacred only has two so obviously there's a difference like <laughs> people people are I just mean, being like beyonce i honestly man, twig, it looks similar like who, you don't see it who cares it's like okay uh dasani water bottles use a plastic cap and you know uh what else I it's, don't it's know. such a signature design it's, I wish you could hear yourself because weren't you just mad at the Tubi folks for co-opting Risa Tisa's story? How is that not the same as this? I mean, this is a, it's the product is going to be different, right? I guess I the know, packaging is similar. The the packaging of Beyonce's new hair care line is the reason, well, also because she made it, but like t- quiet is kept. All of Beyonce's product launches have not been that popular, okay? Yeah. Like House of Darion jeans, like something about like, Beyonce, she can sell concert tickets. She can, you know, do the music thing. But typically, sometimes when she's paired with a product, it just doesn't do as well. Well, and because she's are, like a goddess and you can't. I know, but like people, people are like, I-, I can buy all the products I want. You're just never going to look like Beyonce. No, but Rihanna sells Fenty Beauty well. She sells Savage Underwear oh, yeah. well. Something has not been working as far as like Beyonce's her, her, the, the product of selling a new item. Yeah. So there, there is something very appealing about the sacred bottle design, and it ain't so sacred when you stole it from somebody. Yeah. Well, and and that is a different. Can color. you steal shapes? I, I, I guess like the packaging. We want to hear from y'all. We're going to ask y'all for a simple poll. Do y'all agree with Ben that this isn't really something that we should be pressed about, or are y'all like me, where it's like, now my, now come on, sis, they do look a little, they do look similar, and I mean. Maybe maybe the looks being similar now will help drive sales for both companies. Yeah. You might you might go to the store and be like, oh my God, I think this is like kind of like, you know, the the wish version of the Beyonce product, but it looks the same. You know it does. I love Beyonce. Don't don't get me out of here. All right, next up. <laughs> y'all, y'all know Jake Paul, YouTuber boxer. He is going to be in the rink with Mike Tyson this summer on Netflix on July 20th. And guess what? I'm tuning in. So it worked. So, yeah, Amber and I watched Untold, the um, Jake Paul problem child documentary. I did not think it was on my bucket list to feel connection with another white guy. No, I was like, he's... (laughs) That was not... I, I... This man... Okay, I think Jake and Logan Paul... 
prior to watching this documentary, I thought they were the biggest fuck boys. I thought they were the epitome of suburban, like white privilege, just doing fuckery, skull, skullduggery, and all around, you know, these, the, they just look like white dudes who use the N-word all the time, right? Fair. And p- pieces of shit trash fuckers, right? Amber and I watches this documentary, and you start to understand and contextualize and to see the history. First of all, Jake and Logan Paul grew up with an abusive father. And, and, and it's a very emotional documentary, and they talk about that abuse, literally like physically being slapped in the face, being beaten up. And at one point in the film, uh, Jake calls out his dad, and his dad's like, well, aren't you glad because I didn't make you um, – and F-A-G-G-O-T-T, like calls them, you know, it's like, aren't you glad? And just awful. This guy, this their par- their father was so bad. And uh, you find out like Jake struggled with like suicide at one point. And you start to understand that this amount of wealth that they received when they were 18 years old, you know, buying a $7 million home and like the the weight of that and all the craziness that these kids were doing is because the society was a rewarding them. So it made yep. me have so much more compassion yeah, for compassion. Jake Paul. Yeah. And boxing was his means of moving outside of that craziness of YouTube and um, using his business model of like calling people out uh and ex- especially the ufc for not paying their fighters enough yeah i, now I he, really mess with that he, he's yeah. trying to get a boxers union together yeah he's he's a union he's in support of unions so this um documentary really showed how much um that jake paul is developing as a person and yeah. growing and up as a businessman as a businessman as well because the reality is like i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know any white boxers <laughs> like for, if i'm being completely real like i'm somebody who does not watch ufc doesn't watch mma I, maybe like conor mcgregor but like i yeah. literally could not na- like if somebody asked me right now like name three boxers i would probably be like uh, Muhammad Ali. Conor mcgregor is like ufc he's not Ma- even a boxer right, i wouldn't i wouldn't know i don't know yeah. i'm not in that world and muhammad I, ali i would say muhammad and Cash, ali and Cassius uh, clay i would say That's uh it. floyd mayweather okay <laughs> muhammad ali Cassius clay uh they're uh, the same person layla ali uh, and then I would probably say Floyd Mayweather, and I would probably say Mike Tyson. Yeah. So the fact that Lo- that Jake and Logan Paul are even in my mouth when I'm thinking about this sport is a kind of a testament to how much they've been marketing, 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 mar- marketing is everything. Uh, the so other, I'm, and I'm probably gonna watch the fight. The like, other to thing, be honest with you, is that we Amber and I talk about this that influencers are so insanely um, uh, focused. And you yeah. get that where he he has a drive and focus that allowed him to even compete with a professional boxer. Right. Right. And because this guy started boxing, Jake started boxing, you know, 20 years after, you know, kids are boxing. They're starting to learn to box when they're six or seven or, you know, 10, 12. He, he starts learning how to box when he's in his 20s. And that the story is actually very and I found it very inspiring. Yeah. It made me see them more as like complete people with like complexity but also things to celebrate yeah. as well i did not think that was on my bucket list to Me respect either. the the paul brothers that sort of blew my mind yeah i mean do you think do you think mike tyson's gonna send him to the hospital no no i i so think, think this is well he, planned can and rehearsed. at least hold his own like, oh you think the fight's gonna be rigged um yeah potentially i mean i don't know i don't know i don't know I, I think I just don't I, I just can't, I can't imagine a world where he defeats Mike Tyson. I, I don't think he will defeat him, but Mike Tyson is you know fifty plus and still have you seen you Mike have, Tyson's recent fighting videos? He can still he's jab still fighting, like the, yeah, yeah, heck yeah, yeah. So right? I, I think I think it's gonna be a wonderful experience. I have no desire to watch it. I don't, I don't give a fuck about boxing. We watching but. it. We gonna host the show. <laughs> The next segment of our show is called Imperfect Parent. Not us sharing this coffee cup the whole show. That's crazy. Can you just drink on your side, though? Just drink. I am. I am. Mm. Why don't you just act don't, like... Don't get married, folks. Because you're going to be sharing cups all day. Because you don't want to do no you don't want to do no dishes. But you also share saliva as well, which is hot. Stop. And Ugh. body fluids. Like, Please. whenever you want. Well, not whenever uh, you for, want. But, like, more so. For a freaky dicky video, uh, go to the Patreon. Married people have sex more i think i don't know i have more sex married than i 
didn't when I wa- wasn't for me. <laughs> what you we have more sex married than we were when we were dating, or you no, we no. have sex more more sex now than we. I I just have more sex in general. <sighs> Speaking of sex and and what happens after you have sex, we do have a lovely uh, daughter who will be turning two very soon, and so that's kind of the the. The age where we are, where we can start sending her to a a great preschool, a daycare, if you will. So we just toured our first daycare. Um, Well, no, we've been touring. Oh, have we? Yeah. What other? Oh, well, this this might have been our second daycare. Yeah, second. uh, But this is our first one in a while when it's been this close to her about to start. Yep, that's true. So, yeah, so we toured it. Uh, and Amber fell in love. Like, she I did. I had to keep my shades on because I was the whole place smelled like shit, though. No, it did. They smelled like shit. Daycare smelled like yourself. shit. No, it smelled perfect. In I there. literally, there was lit- in the middle of the tour. There's this kid sort of behind the tour guide, and he's like, "This is our quiet corner," but he's just pooping over here, and you could smell the shit. I mean, so, you have so it's a two floor building. Yes, exactly. I'm just you saying. You poop on yourself. I have, I have, but I'm saying yes, priest. That we go through it, and Amber's so connected to this place and it's it's like a pretty mid preschool to be honest it's beautiful it's she, nice she didn't even want to leave when we were about to yeah leave. she didn't want to leave that's very you, true i think this is the thing i think you are going to have a tough time with her starting daycare i really do no i'm going to be able to finish my novel you finally. gonna say that but then i was like okay well when, when she starts you were like oh half days let's do half days to start i'm like Okay, we can start half days. I, full days. I don't give a fuck. Yes, you Keep do. Keep her out of the stop home. Trying to, stop trying to flex like that ain't your little baby. She is my little baby, but I want my life. I want my life back. You're not going to be just reading while she at school all day. No, I'm going to be writing. I'm going to be, yeah. You'll see me. You want to talk Teachers about kids in school? S- schools, yeah. So we got we got this... <sighs> we got a teacher doing dumb is, shit. Nobody in this class has a... Um, understanding of shapes i'm sorry one two three four five out of 33 five out of 33 have a concept of shapes we're talking squares rectangles uh triangles that's all we just literally we haven't even gotten to the next <laughs> oh my god we even haven't we haven't even got to the hard shapes yet oh right. my gosh yeah let's let's, let's talk about this because we both we both used to be teachers in school yeah. Um, I taught uh, high school geometry. You taught 6th and 7th and 8th grade yep. math and science. Yeah. So, so we have been frustrated with a class for not knowing basic grade level things before. Absolutely. I'll admit that. I'll admit the frustration on that part. So there's a there's a couple things that are happening here, right? And I think the whenever someone makes a judgment, there are two ways to look at the judgment. The first in the spectrum. Let's say there's a spectrum. So Amber gets upset at me for not doing the dishes, right? And mm-hmm. and in this judgment, there's two ways I can look at this, right? She's making this judgment so that I can fix myself on one end. Like, that's the most gracious way of looking at it. Right. And then there's the egotistical way of looking at a statement, which is she's saying this to tear me down and make me feel like shit. And there's a spectrum of that. So this statement where he says, you don't know shapes, is you can look at this two ways. One, the most gracious way of looking at this is that he is pointing out the fact that his, their previous teachers did not properly prepare them for on grade level material, right? That's the most gracious way of looking at that and why he's filming it. And then the the most egotistical way is that he's saying this to make the kids feel like shit and to show that he is the gatekeeper of knowledge, right? And I think there's a spectrum of where this falls into. Gotcha. The topic that he wants them to understand right. is actually way more complex. And most people don't, understand shapes like this this of is course. the new common core mathematical standards so that way but also the way he's using shame is incredibly that's I mean, what i want to talk about right? yeah we can talk about him using shame and the frustration of being like forced to teach standards where kids don't have that background knowledge and i think his frustration is real and as a teacher i felt that of course but yeah. him using shame is i think yeah not healthy. What I don't like is when you pin some kids against other kids. Mm. And you do that when you say, which one of y'all can do it? Which one of y'all can't? Yeah. I hate stuff like that. Because then the smart kids in the room are going to be like, great. Now everybody's going to be like, you're the little shit that raised your hand. No class is going to... 
th this creator has gone viral before for a hot take about how his kids weren't on reading level, but none of the kids were in the room. He wasn't dragging them right in front of them. So this is given very much so when your black mama calls her friend to talk about how you did something wrong at school and you're in the room. So that's the part I don't like. I don't even mind that he's recording in the classroom because he's not featuring them on there. But I hate when it's like, we clearly know you're not even doing this to ask us the questions. We know you're doing this to show people how stupid we are. So we're not going to raise our hands. We're not going to respond to you. So that's the part I don't like. Pinning the kids against each other. And when you're just loudly talking, but you're not talking at the kids. That's fair. Yeah. I think that's those fair. are those are excellent points. There because was... did you did you ever record in in when you were in the classroom? Oh never. Oh, I recorded things like cool activities. Like cool activities to that show I the that I would then share with you know admin to be like, okay, we built these constructs based on like Mayan history or whatever. Right. Um totally I've done stuff like that, but not for content. I never did content, even when I was a teacher and working with you, because that was in our content. Our content was like you know, hounding each other, making fun of each other. Right. The Something I did see a creator respond to this video. He's like, uh, he's taking advantage of these kids. And, you know, I'm sure they're not getting paid for his viral TikToks. And I was like, first of all, you, you're you obviously not an influencer because TikTok doesn't pay you shit. And it's also... It, some. some people get, do really well on TikTok monetarily. Yes, but not... No, you can't the pay the your guy bills is still teaching. The yeah. guy is still teaching. And then... Try, the other thing is that when you are a teacher, you are spending a lot of your own personal money. That's true. For your classroom. And based on how this guy talks about his students, I'm sure he's not teaching in a well-funded classroom, which means I I would bet money that he uses his personal money for his classroom. Of 100%. course. 100%. And so I thought that was <laughs> someone making that comment about teachers, uh, teach, teacher creators, which I'm glad there are teacher creators. Me too. I think what he's showing ultimately, and when you look at this in the most gracious way, is that we are having students who are not being taught the prerequisites for their grade level instruction, and the admin is expecting this creator to bring them up there. Mm -hmm. And that is so stressful, right? Like, why right. can't we just meet each individual kid at where they're at, even if they're behind? And and I think it gets very, very difficult, especially when you don't have resources, because this it looks like this teacher, the way he's talking to them and also the way he's dressed, um, he might be under like in an underutilized school, like an under um, funded for sure. school. I'm just saying I would love some balance. I would love for this creator to record himself during a meeting with admin. Make them the brunt of the joke, because right now the kids are the brunt of the joke. Yeah, that's true. How much do you pay attention to letting Wild explore and like things that you may not care for? That's great. Great question. This is a great topic of discussion about like what we want Wild to like and dislike because I honestly feel like I'm a little bit more fluid with her likes and dislikes. I feel like you're the the like she will like Star Trek parent. Yeah, no, why do you say that? Why do you say that? Because sometimes when I see her not into the thing, you are still just hammering away at it. Like what? Just like, sh okay, so I love that you love taking her to museums, but there are some art walks that we do that I visibly see her not interested in, and we're going to continue to go on every floor. And I'm like, bitch, she wants to get out and run around somewhere. Like, she doesn't want to be in this art gallery today. Exposure is critical. I, it is for, critical, but sometimes when you see, like, I'm like, she's not rocking with it. Like, let's go but, outside and play. But I expose her to everything. So there's this idea that parents should expose their child to everything, even the things they do not like, right? Of course. Right. So I I do do that. I do do that. I She goes to church. I don't, I'm not crazy about church. When is she going to church? Without, Every what, time we're what, at your parents. At my parents' house. You're not guiding that. You're not, you're not I'm, guiding that. I'm allowing her to go. Okay. I guess so, actually I could not make her not go because that that's a battle I would not want to have with your mom. Right. Just but what I'm I'm talking about what are the things that I, you were because so I have some I, things that I'm like if it hurt if she didn't like this I I would be devastated like I can yeah. admit that but you'll be like no 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 it's just because you haven't seen it enough just watch it twelve more times like that's exactly. what you would say exactly I want her to really I personally want her to really 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 be into musicals. Mm -hmm. Of all kinds. It could be the Disney ones. It could be the Broadway and theater ones. I just, I need her to like musical theater mm -hmm. and like going to shows. 
So that that it's gonna take a little bit of time, but I I really yeah. love that she enjoys like singing to Frozen and things like that. I do we that. need to switch it up? <laughs> do do some different ones? Sure, but she will like musicals and and, and she will and being like dramatic. Star Trek. She will like science fiction. She will like those things eventually. We'll watch the Star Wars, the small, the tiny Star Wars. Right. Uh, yeah, and she will be gay. <laughs> Here we go. She will be gay. <laughs> uh, I say that jokingly. She can, you know, whatever. She'll probably want to be like transhuman and like download her consciousness into a computer and be like, I don't want. And my, it's only I don't because want my you physical show- body anymore. This is all like because you show her some episodes. She's like, yeah, I'm a robot. And she's like, Black Mirror, this is awesome. And I'm with it. I as identify long as she as does a it robot. in a theatrical way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So speaking of trying to convince our child to like certain things that she she might not be a big fan of, I love you down. But the other night you made this meal and you spent about you spent about two hours, you know, meal prepping and making it. And <laughs> rice was a little crunchy. But we, you finally finished the meal, and we sat down, and and Wild didn't want any of it, and I and I and I felt bad. I tried to even convince her, like, come on, airplane, and she wasn't taking a bite of it. So I I caught you feeling away when she requested chicken nuggets, and I made them for her. I ate your meal, baby. Thank you. I think it was less the way she, uh, my two year old, said no that hurt my feelings, <laughs> which like she pushed the food away. It wasn't like. I'm not really hungry right now, which is something you would tell me. You would sort of sugarcoat it, but two year olds. you would know was a lie. This this little jerk like <laughs> took the food and like shoved it out away, and then I thought, and the way you gave her chicken nuggets was sort of like tricky. Like I go upstairs, and I thought maybe she was just not hungry, and I come down, and y'all are watching Love Is Blind, and she's <laughs> chowing down on the chicken nuggets. And Do you have a problem when I give her when I sneak food? To her, because no. I try to at least be respectful. Wait till you left the room. No, I don't. I don't have a problem. She's a kid, and she's developing her taste buds, and that's fine. Like she has to eat. If it's not my turmeric chicken that I've spent two hours making, by the way, recipe only said forty minutes. Fuck those. That's the biggest <laughs> fucking lie. Biggest fucking lie. We those thirty-minute <laughs> recipes take three to two hours. And then we look. New York got Times. Fight. Fuck you. What? We got we low key got into a fight because <laughs> I hate become a Neanderthal because I'm like banging on the table like you said forty minutes yeah. you said forty minutes and and I used brown rice instead of white rice because I was trying horrible. to be healthy but brown rice just takes longer to cook it wasn't horrible how how do you think the meal tasted I was like if disappointed. you had to give it a rating on a one ten I would give it a six it was okay. not passable. It See, was it's hard for me to put failing. my acting on when stuff like that happens. It's but you tried. Good. You did more than I did. So then, we're, we're grateful for that. But then also share the other thing I tried to make. Remember? You tried to make something recently? Yeah, the roast. Oh. <laughs> ben is the only person I know that will burn an all-day roast in a slow cooker. Like, we waited. I want to say you put on a pot roast for eight hours. So we waited eight hours to taste this meal, and it was it was ashen and crispy. So I try to, and I love when you give me a meal that you know is burnt, and you wait for me to say something. I'm like, this is a full. I thought gas the burnt light. was just the flavoring. No, no, it was like a pork shoulder that cooked eight hours, but I should only been cooked seven hours because I didn't. I don't think I put as much pork in, and it was honey, and I put like a cup of honey, so I wasted a cup of really good honey. Yeah. And then a you know a cup of soy sauce and so it's like so what do we do when you, garlic and when you cook the meal for eight hours and it's not good so I did my best to eat around it I had your back I ate around it I don't know what do you do I don't know you just choke it down like <laughs> you've had things that you've choked down that you've not liked before the next segment of like our shots show. I wasn't talking about sex Amber says I make too many <laughs> sex jokes you do. I was, talking about, sex I was talking about shots. You'll do shots. You choke down a shot and you don't really like the shot. Okay. Shots of alcohol. Gotcha, Al- gotcha. Shots of alcohol, yeah. Okay, I can I will not make a sex joke until you can. the end of the show. You I'm can. Gonna, yeah, okay. I'll make a jokes. I'm gonna make jokes, but no if sex he jokes. makes something that could even be implied as a sex joke, I want y'all to sound off in the comments because we we know you can't. All right. That means that means you won't you probably won't be even talking the rest of the show. All right. All right. 
So we have been asking patrons, listeners, viewers, we've been asking y'all about some of the things going on in y'all's life. For example, have you ever given someone an ultimatum? What are your mm -hmm. red flags? So we did get a fun letter. So let's read it. It's a family issue. In a nutshell, I was done wrong by a family member. And my siblings continued to be in community with this individual. I tried to ignore it and keep it cool, but ultimately realized I don't have space for my, the, for my disrespect, perceived or real. Gave him the hood speak version. So she said, I told him, if you want to fuck with that person, I can't fuck with you. And that's where we left it. If maintaining that relationship is that important to you, do that. But you can't do that with an expectation of a relationship with me. Oh, that's the ultimatum. That is the ultimatum. So yeah. it's like, if you want to continue to talk to this person, to talk to this family member, to fuck with them, you can, but I won't fuck with you. Is it okay to talk with someone and not have the other person know or be around when you're still talking with them? You know, like you, you're, you're, boot, you're, you're beefing with somebody and then you have this other friend who's friends with the person you're beefing with. Right. And you know that person is hanging out with the friends you're beefing with, but yeah. you're hanging out with both of them. Sort of I like when, that when, when couples break up. Right. And you want and you want to maintain friendships with both of them, right? I think that's okay, but this is a family member. So it's like you can't really get around potentially seeing this person at the family cookout at mm -hmm. Christmas time or whatever. So we're, I'm going to be like, oh, I just, you're going to, you're going to dap that person up. Like, well, I, I just told y'all I cut them off. Mm. I want to say... Ben, you are really bad at um, not, <laughs> like, I will tell you I got beef with a bitch at my job, right? Which this truly happened this once. I was like, Ben, happen. me and this girl at my job, we are we are in close proximity with each other. We arguing with each other every day. Like, she is so incompetent. She's so mean to the kids. She gets on my freaking nerves. We went to the work party. Who did Ben go up and hug? You remember when you went up and hugged her? I was at a wedding, yeah. Or a wedding, a work a party, wedding. a wedding. Explain yourself. Did you just forget that I told, I, I was like, I'm coming home and complaining about her every day. I or think is I, this like the I enemy thought, of my enemy is my friend? Did you go up there and you were like, yo, <laughs> no, I thought, we, we well, deal with the same crap. I just, uh, so her, her boyfriend is deaf. And so I felt, <laughs> I felt bad He's for deaf her. in one ear. I felt, no, he can't hear shit. What does that have to do with you beefing, like... I guess, like, I just feel bad for her. And her... She has an, a brother with autism. That's, like, her whole identity. And it's, like, <laughs> she's it's just hard. very easy. I just... She's very easy to make fun of. She's sort of stupid. And I just felt bad for her. And at this point, you had stopped working with her. So I thought you were sort of, you no. know... Because the first time I you introduced me to her, she's like, oh, this person's really cool, and I work with them. And then as you worked with her, you started hating her. So the first couple of times I met her was always a positive experience. Yeah. And and then I slowly, you slowly told me that she's a terrible human, and like, you know, right. you wouldn't mind if she accidentally, you know, got into a car accident or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> That's you, what I said. I think uh, at one point, you're like, oh, then you're like, I love the days she doesn't show up to work because that means I don't don't have to work with her. Okay, but so what is the protocol? If I stop I hanging out with somebody, if I stop talking to them, and I tell you that, if we see them at a function, what is your next move? I think from now, I'm punching them in the face. Thank you. Yeah, That's I got what I'm talking back. about. Yeah, I got have your back. Have my back. Yeah. And I do the same thing for you, don't I? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you don't have as many people in your shit list. I don't, yeah, I don't hold you don't have any grudges. Enemies. I don't have a lot of enemies. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, you you did, you ha you had one friend that you cut off, and I let her sort of cuss you, you out. Did a let, bit you didn't say anything. You were very <laughs> nice to her. She's because like, I get it. I get it. I know why she was, you don't. She was making some really great points when she was cussing you out, but I didn't let it go on too long. Yeah. I. I think she had a right to be mad at me yes. looking back at this, but she was also not someone I should be hanging out with. Several of you out there have informed me that sometimes as wives, we interrupt our husbands. So we have a new segment idea coming at y'all. This is going to be the it's been real segment. Ben is going to speak so passionately about something that matters to him. And yes, I yep. am not allowed to interrupt him no matter how unhinged this gets. So are we ready for yeah, this? Yeah, I'm ready. 
don't twist my arm now. But you know what? Rules is rules. I will not be interrupting Ben. Welcome to It's Been Real. So last night at around 11 p.m., Amber looks at me and says, I need to start watering my plants. It's 11 p.m., mind you. And she wants to take all her freaking plants and put them in our sink. And I have told her this multiple times. If she does that, she is going to ruin the garbage disposal. We have already replaced two garbage disposals because of this. Two of them. One was in our home in Chicago because she was doing this. And the dirt was sort of clogging it up. And she's like, what's the difference between dirt and food that get, gets in the garbage disposal? Like, what kind of question is that? And I love you, Amber, to death. But you don't understand like basic plumbing. Like I and I've tried to explain this to her and she won't have any of it. So, listeners, I would love for you to share some just basic plumbing and why a little bit of egg can go into dark garbage disposal, but clumps of dirt, clumps of soil that you buy from the store should not be inside the sink. And then I tell her this, and she's like, fine, fine. There's no garbage disposal and upstairs in our shower. Does she not understand that pipes can get clogged as well? The pipes, right? Right? They're, I'm not, I was not going to make, but I'm going to make a joke. So they are about, like, there are porn stars with bigger dick circumferences than the pipes that we have in our town home. If she w decides to water her plants inside our shower or our bathtub, she is going to clog that up and she cannot get this through her skull. And she's like, She's like, all right, well, what am I supposed to do? Like, how are you going to help me? And I was like, yeah, you take all the plants outside of the fucking house and you get a, a bucket of water and you water them outside. She's like, well, are you going to help me to do that? And I said, yes, I will help you do that. And she's like, well, if you don't help me, then I'm doing it inside the sink. And, and I was like, if you do that, you're going to. And then we just went back into this conversation. So that is. That is all I have to say. I love you, Amber, to death, but I think it's about time you admit that you're wrong and that the, the listeners should know that garbage disposals will be ruined if you water your plants inside your sink. You should not be watering your plants inside your bathtub, um, especially in these townhomes. You should be watering them outside. Oh, yeah, and she said, oh, if you water outside, won't the dirt get outside? Like, it, that was a bad thing. <laughs> I just thought that was funny because dirt outside is fine. Like it'll, the wind will blow it away. It's anyway. Uh, so that's been something on my heart that I would like. I wanted to get off and share. And uh, yeah, so I'm done. I'm done talking. You did very. You did very well, Amber. I did. What say you? All a woman wants to do in her life is just keep her plants watered, keep herself watered. Okay. And now I'm hearing that I, I'm not allowed to do that in my own home. So who's right here? If I can't water my plants, you can't water me. Let's, let's end there. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Fly on the Wildin' Podcast. Join Patreon, Carrots. We love you. And I'll see y'all for next week's show. Bye, y'all.